lovely people and welcome back to Learning with Yagman X. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to set up fixed camera angles to replicate a classic Resident Evil styled game. However, I got quite a few questions about the tank controls. So I think it's about time that we take a deeper look into tank controls and how you can control things like turn speed and animations. In this tutorial, I'm just going to get straight into the meat and potatoes and show you how to replicate tank controls from nostalgic games such as Resident Evil. So let's jump straight into Unreal Engine 5. So I'm working in a level that already has fixed cameras set up and if you want to learn how to do that you can check out my other video but as you can see we don't have tank controls so let's do that now. So I'm going to speed through this as I did already go through it in my prior fixed camera tutorial but if you find BP third person character in your content browser you can right click and duplicate this one and we'll work in a new character blueprint. So I'm going to call it BP underscore character underscore tank controls. And then to make sure that your project uses this new blueprint, we need to go into a window up the top left and world settings, click on that. It should open in the bottom right and you can see a game mode tab. So let's find this in the content browser, the folder button and then open by double clicking. And as you can see, the default pawn class is BP third person character. You can either change this to tank controls, but what I'm going to do to keep things clean is go back into our project and just duplicate the game mode as well. So duplicate and put BP uh, tank control game mode. And then we can open up this new game mode, change default pawn class to tank controls. So it's BP character tank controls and then go back into our map. We have to, I'll have to drag this one up there. And uh, in the world settings, just make sure that we're using the right game mode. So we're going to be using the new one that we just created, which is tank control game mode. And to just double check this, you can hit play, eject and search character. And here we go. We're using BP character underscore tank controls. So everything's loading in fine. Now let's actually create the logic that makes tank controls. Go into your BP character tank controls, double click to open and find the movement input. It will be from the enhanced input action IA move event here. Here you can see some logic already set up to move the character forwards left or right. We want to change this so that it only affects the rotation of the player. So I'm going to click on this and hit delete to remove add movement input and we'll replace it with a set control rotation from our player controller. So right click and first of all we need to get the reference to our player controller. So we'll get player controller and then we will set control rotation. There we go. We can also remove this get right vector that won't be needed anymore. And from new rotation, I want you to click and drag out and then you can choose make rotator in the drop down. I'm going to delete this little node as well that's floating. So we only want our player to rotate on the spot. So we're going to hook up X and Y to be exactly the same from get control rotation to our new rotator and Z is going to be what controls the rotation. This input is going to change depending on the action value X from our enhanced input action IA move event. This value will be either positive or negative depending on if the player is moving left or right. So we can add this to our return value x on get control rotation. So I'm going to add it to that one. And then I will put the return value into our z on the make rotator. And don't forget to hook all this back up from triggered. 
and hook back up the add movement input as well. And one last thing to make sure that this works and we can test it is make sure that you have your BP character tank control selected and you can see the details panel on the right. Make sure that use control rotation your is enabled. Also to make sure that your mouse does not rotate the player, just make sure that camera input, which is enhanced input action IA look event, is unhooked or you can just delete it all entirely. Most of the time when you're using tank controls it's because you're pairing it with fixed camera angles so there isn't any need to have a look system where the player gets to control the camera with their mouse. Hit compile top left and we're just going to play it so I can show you what you've got right now. So this is very basic tank controls. They're rotating, but it's very slow. And also they're not animating, just kind of sliding in place. So let's give you more control on what you can do with these tank controls, shall we? So let's control the turn speed. Open up BP character tank controls, and we want to multiply this action value X with a float. So drag off it and search for multiply. And then we want to have the return value be uh, put into the bottom of our add node. So we're going to add the output of the multiplication to the get control rotation Z value. I'm ready this one. And this is the multiplication that will drive the speed of the turn speed. I like doing it this way because it's independent to the rest of the movement. So this isn't going to impact the movement of walking, running, you know, moving forward and backwards in any way. We're going to do that in a little bit. It's only going to change the turn speed when we are rotating. Right click on the float in your multiplication node and promote it to a variable and I'm going to call this one turn speed. Now on the right you'll see a details panel and it'll show you what variable type it is, a float, and you won't be able to see the default value until you hit compile which is at the top left just up here. <laughs> hit compile and then you can see the default value down the bottom right. What works for me is using 3.0. I think that's quite a good one. And now hit compile again, go back and play and then let's have a look. Oh, see that turn speed. Actually, I think that might be a bit too fast, but you can see it's much faster than when we had it before. So now that we can control the turn speed, let's add an option to be able to sprint. The new Unreal Engine 5 input system actually is quite a different layout to Unreal Engine 4. See, in Unreal Engine 4, you would have gone into top left, edit, project settings, and then you would have looked for engine in the left here and input. And here's where you would have input new action mappings. But Unreal Engine 5 works a little differently. As you can see, this says axis and action mappings are now deprecated. Please use the enhanced input actions and input mapping contexts. So we're going to do that. If we go back to our third person folder in the content browser, there should be a folder called input. And here we have the MIC underscore default. And if we click on the folder actions, we can see all of our input actions here. So we've got jump, look and move already set up by default. So we're going to create a new input by right clicking and creating input action. And I'm going to call this IA underscore sprint. Double click on sprint. We'll leave all this at its default because we're going to bind it in the input mapping context, which is IMC underscore default. So back out of that and into our project, go back a folder so we can see the IMC default here. Double click to open this one up. We can add a new mapping, which we just created, which is IA sprint. And then you can click on the little keyboard to literally just bind to whatever key you press. So I just pressed left shift. And if you want it to trigger on right shift, I can do that as well. There we go. As you can see, we can open up the other ones that they've already set up. And uh, they do have gamepad and even phone references as well. So this is pretty easy for you to set up 
all of your key bindings uh, depending on different platforms as well. So save this and go back to BP character tank controls. Now you can add a new event by right clicking in the event graph and just search for sprint and this new enhanced action event should appear. So the enhanced input action allows us to have many different triggers based on the key that's bound to the action. We can open up these and see that you can see when it has been pressed, when it has been completed, how many seconds have elapsed since the button has been pressed. So there's a lot that you can do with this new input system. I'm going to show you how to set up a hold sprint, but also how to set up a toggle sprint as well. The default player speed can be found in the BP character tank controls details under max walk speed. There you go. So you can see at the moment it is 500. So to set up different speeds for walking or sprinting, we need to change this max walk speed uh, to two different float variables. So in our left on variables, let's add two new ones. We're going to call this one sprint speed and it's going to be a float and we're going to duplicate that and call the second one a walk speed. I want my walk speed to be 300 and sprint speed double that 600 and compile. So for ease I'm going to create a new function called toggle sprint. This is going to store the logic for switching between walk and sprint and it'll also have a boolean variable for checking to see if the player is sprinting. We're going to add an input parameter to our toggle sprint node here on the right and we're going to call it uh, should sprint. And from this, we want to see if it's equal to is sprinting. So let's make that is sprinting boolean, right click, promote to variable, and call it is sprinting, is sprinting. Top right, there we go, compile. If they are both the same, so if say I've told my player it should be sprinting and it already is sprinting, then we don't want anything to happen. So we'll just continue the logic from the false branch. By the way, the default value of both of these should sprint and is sprinting should be false. So if should sprint is not the same as is sprinting, then we want to update our max walk speed from the character movement. Where is it? There it is, get character movement on the bottom and we want to set max walk speed here. So false here and we will set the max walk speed dependent on whether should sprint is true or false. So let's use a select on this float and uh, we'll do select float here and if you right click should Sprint. So if should sprint is true, it'll pick A, and if it's false, it'll pick B. So we want uh, should sprint, if it's true, then we want it to use sprint speed, and if it's false B, then we want it to use walk speed. So there we go, and that's going to update the set max walk speed. And then don't forget to update our is sprinting boolean by should sprint. So any input parameters can just be called in that same function like any other variable really. So there we go. So then should sprint will be the same as is sprinting after we have updated whether the player should sprint or walk. <laughs> Go back to our event graph and to set up a hold sprint we just want to ensure that when triggered we call toggle sprint and we want yes should sprint 
And when completed, when the shift key is no longer being held, then we also want to toggle sprint and should sprint should be false. And also to make sure that your game starts at your walk speed float that we've created here, you can either make sure that the VP character tank controls, uh, max walk speed is the same as what you have set it to be in your variable, or you can go up the top of your event graph, find event begin play here, and you can literally just put uh, toggle sprint in here and make sure that should sprint is false. So let's try that out and see how that works. So there we go, we are walking now slowly and then I press shift and I start to run. Run, 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 walk, 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 no shift and shift, run, 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 run. There we go. But what if you want a toggle shift because a lot of tank controls use that. So let's look at that then. Go back down to our sprint event and we are actually going to delete one of these. Unhook, so to unhook you press alt and then click by the way. And we're going to call toggle sprint from started instead of triggered. And it's going to be based on the inverse of the is sprinting bool. So if you search for not and then look for not boolean, we're going to set it to be the opposite of what is sprinting is. So every time you press the button, it does the opposite of what your player is already doing. The reason why I'm using started is because it's triggered only when the button has been initially pressed, whereas triggered is triggered upon button press, but also consistently after that while the button is still being held. And if you want to have more control over the acceleration and deceleration, this is actually pretty simple. Click on your BP character tank controls and look for acceleration, which is here, max acceleration, or braking deceleration. I know you're here somewhere. Walking, is that it? Here you are. Braking deceleration walking. The higher these numbers are, the quicker the acceleration and deceleration will be. So just play around with these and see what feels right for you. <sighs> but we're not done yet. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> because the problem with sprinting is what happens when you move backwards. So this is my toggle sprint. I'm sprinting now, I'm pressing shift again, and I'm not sprinting anymore. But it looks a bit strange when I'm sprinting and, oh, <laughs> and I go backwards. Sprinting backwards isn't often a thing in, um, say, Resident Evil, Silent Hill. Um, so we need to figure out what's going to happen when I start to walk backwards and how that affects the sprint. As a player, I would expect that when tapping backwards on the D-pad, this would stop the sprint. So we're going to modify what we've just set up to accommodate for this. Open back up your BP character tank controls and move back up to our move event. So we want to find out whether the player is moving forwards or backwards. We can check for action value Y and see if it is above or below zero. If it's above zero, the player will be moving forwards. And if it's below zero, they will be moving backwards. So I'm going to just do a operator check, so less than zero. If action value Y is less than zero, we know the player is reversing. So let's right click on the Boolean, promote it to a variable, change its name to is reversing, and compile and just make sure that that Boolean is default false. And then we will set this variable along the way before adding our movement input. By the way, you can clean up these strings by just double clicking on them and moving them around. Right, so now that we have a reference for when our player is reversing, let's go back down to our sprint event. And I'm actually going to show you how to do this with the hold sprint first. So set hold sprint back up, which is two toggle sprints one true upon triggered and one false upon cancelled 
So because triggered is being checked after one or more processing ticks, it will continuously know when the sprint key is still held. So this way, all we really need to do is make sure that toggle sprint can only be true if is reversing, which is our new Boolean, comes back as false. False, false. Here, so is reversing false, then we can run. But if throughout the whole time that we're holding shift, is reversing becomes true, then we could make should sprint false. So we're automatically forcing should sprint to stop so that the player goes back to walk speed. If I hold shift, it goes through this. If I'm walking forwards, that's fine. I can toggle my sprint and it will always be sprinting. But then even if my shift key is still held down and is reverse becomes true, I will then stop sprinting, start to walk. And even if my shift key is still held down and I stop reversing and start walking forward again, it will continue to sprint. So this is what I like about this. I know it's continual checks, but um, it means that it feels nice and fluid. I can keep my, my finger on the button throughout this whole time, walk backwards and, and run forwards, and my run never feels like it's cancelled. And what about for toggle sprint? So this is a little bit different. Go back to BP character, tank controls, set up our toggle sprint once more. From started. As a player for a toggle sprint, I would expect a player reversing to have cancelled that sprint entirely and to not start sprinting again once I move forwards, unless I hit shift key once more. So what I'll do here is I'll actually force the movement to toggle the sprint if reversing is true. So I'm going to add a branch from the is reversing that we set and move this one back a little bit, give us a bit of room. If reversing is true, then we want to toggle sprint and make sure that sprint is false. So we start to walk and from false, we can just add movement as normal like so. Oh, make sure that is reversing is actually connected to the branch. That would help. And that should really do the trick because as soon as you're reversing and this is a continual check, um, it will force the should sprint to be false. But as an extra check, you can always just take the branch from here, is reversing, and make sure that um, toggle sprint only toggles when reversing is false, just in case anything overrides what we have set up up here, but it shouldn't do anyway. And then when you play, play, you can toggle shift to run. And then as soon as I go backwards, I don't run. And even if I go forwards again, I'm not running until I hit shift again. Hope that makes sense. Thought I'd show you two different ways to do that. And as a little treat, I thought I would also show you how to add some animations because right now we are just sliding around on the floor. So let's see what we can do about that. Uh, we're going to use animations that are readily available through the third person uh, template. If you go into characters, mannequins, animations, and then Manny, I believe that is a yes an animation sequence called walk in place. So I just found this one and I thought this would be perfect for just doing our turn on the spot animation. We can just do this instead of sliding. <laughs> Makes a bit more sense. All the animation logic is inside of a blueprint called the animation blueprint. So let's close this animation sequence. And if we go into content characters, mannequins and animations, you will find ABP underscore Manny, which is an animation blueprint. And this is the parent blueprint of ABP Quinn. So we need to right click and duplicate this one. I'll name it something like ABP tank controls. 
Then now we have this new version so that we don't overwrite the original. I'm just going to quickly update my blueprint character tank controls to use this um, animation blueprint. So you can see if you click on BP character tank controls, there is uh, animation mode use animation blueprint we want that yes and um, we want anim class to be our new one abp tank controls so make sure it's using that okay and compile now go back to our new abp tank controls and double click it to open it should open with the event graph but what i want to show you first is under anim graph so if you just open up that drop down on the left there and double click on locomotion and this is a state machine animation state machine so note how there are currently two states in this state machine there is idle and there is walk and run they also have transition rules so you can see that this transition rule um, is checking a boolean called should move and this one is checking on the same boolean but when it's not so when, when the boolean is false. The logic behind this boolean here, should move, can be found in the event graph. So you can find that on the left under graphs. And you can find the boolean right here. It's being set um, from the get current acceleration of the movement component. So if the acceleration is more than three, because there is a small threshold, then set should move to true. And this naming actually quite confused me because I thought, well, should move, should be true, even if we're rotating. But that is not the case because it's using acceleration. So if the player is not actually moving from the current position, as in forwards or backwards, then should move will always return false. So we need to check against the rotation to see if the player is rotating. So to get the rotation of the player, I'm going to go to our event blueprint initialize animation. And uh, from the movement component, I'm just going to get uh, update rotation, get the last update rotation. And then we can right click on this value and promote it to a variable. And I'm going to call this current rotation. So this is just saving the reference to the current rotation of the player and this is getting it as soon as it's initialized. Now the other event used here is event blueprint update animation which is executed when the animation is updated. This is where we'll check to see if the player is indeed rotating. The sequence node it just executes a series uh, of pins and keeps blueprints a little bit tidier. So we're going to add this pin and do our logic from number three here. So from the movement component, component, we will get the last rotation, update rotation again. And we will check to see whether it's not equal to our current rotation. And if it's not equal to our current rotation, then yes, it must be rotating. And then right click on promote to variable, and we will call this variable is rotating. Is rotating. Oh. So if get last update rotation is not the same as current rotation, rotation, then yes, is rotating is set to true. And we're going to put that from our third pin in the sequence and double click on it and drag it down to keep it a bit nicer. And then we do want to update the current rotation as well if it has been updated. So we'll just put a branch here. And if is rotating is true, then we will just set the current rotation. So we'll just pop that here, set this one to be the same as our get last update rotation here. I'll just quickly comment this. So highlight and press C to comment. I can't type today for some reason. Okay, and if you want to check this to see whether your logic is working or not, we could also do a print string. Pop 
the is rotating uh, value into the string, not into the print to string boolean. And then compile, and if we play, there you go. We're getting false now because we're not rotating, not rotating, not rotating, rotating, rotating. So it's very easy to debug to see if uh, if your logic is gone awry somewhere. Okay, I'm going to remove this print string. Now that we know when our player is rotating, we can add this to a new state in the locomation animation state machine. So open this up again and right click to add a new state. And we're going to call this turn in place, like so. Let's try and not have any spaces in there. And I want this to be able to be transitioned to from both idle and walk and run. So I'm going to just click and drag, ooh, to create a new transition rule. And again, click and drag back from idle to turn in place and click and drag to walk and run and click and drag back. So currently turn in place will never actually be an active state because it hasn't got any rules in its transitions. So let's sort that out now. From idle to turn in place. We, we know that idle to walk and run is when should move equals true. Let's double click on the idle to turn in place. And we want this to become active when is rotating is true, but also when is moving is false. Is moving, get is moving. Or should move, it should move, isn't it? Should move, yes, there you go. So when should move is a no, a big no, no, not, not, not equal. It's a not, not Boolean. And when is rotating is true. So let's use an and. So when is rotating is true and when should move is not true, <laughs> then that'll be a yes. And we should transition down to that one. I'd say this will be your challenge, set all of these up, but uh, you can do it with me now if you so wish. From turn in place back to idle, should move, uh, should not be true, and is rotating, should not be true, and then you can enter. Yes, yeah, so not should move and not is rotating, and that one's just not should move and yes, is rotating. Uh, and then we've got walk and run as well. So from turn in place to walk and run, we just need to check for should move is true because you could technically still be turning and start moving, but we don't want to walk in this place. We want to start walking forwards. And this one should be should move is not true and rotating true. Should move is not true and rotating is true. Do it that way. And now we should have it. All right, so there's the rules. And then to set up the animation to play when turn in place becomes true, we just need to double click on this one and we need to look for an animation sequence Actually, we can probably just look for walk in place. Yeah, with the spaces and then just choose play MM walk in place. And there we go, compile. Now click play and fingers crossed. <gasps> Amazing, we're walking in place. But we don't walk in place when we're also rotating and moving, that's very important. And I will also say, if you need to debug this, because I did when I was figuring it out, you can click play in editor, detach the player controller, go into uh, your ABP, animation, blueprint, tank controls. I can go back into my state machine and you can use this up the top preview instance and choose ABP tank controls for which one you are using. And then you can kind of pop this out. This is tougher to do on one screen. It's much easier when you have two, but I think I can still show you. So I'm playing it now. Let's uh, get back into the player. You get a full preview of what exactly I'm doing. So, ooh, where have I gone? There, I'm turning in place. 
so you can really debug it and figure out what's going on. So now we're going to talk about how to add an animation for when the player is walking backwards, because as you can see, it doesn't look quite right right now. <laughs> If we go back into our Manny folder, we can actually see that there is no animation for running or walking backwards. But this is pretty easy to do. Just find MM walk forward or whatever animation you want to make a backwards version of and right click and duplicate. And then I'm just going to call it MM walk BWD backward. Um, and then double click to open and it's so easy to reverse an animation. You just find the right scale on the left, minus one. There you go, done. Now, let's set this up. So press save, and we're going to use this in a blend space animation. Mmm, sounds cool, it is. By default, you can see what our animation blueprint uses for walking and running. So double click on the state and you can see it uses BS, which is a blend space, MM walk run. So back into our content browser, the BS MM walk run is here. We can double click to open it and check it out. So this is a 1D blend space. And as you can see, it changes based on speed. So we have different animations uh, set into these points here. They're called blend samples on the left. You can see we've got run forward, walk forward, and walk in place. And they're all based around a horizontal axis or axis called speed. So these three animations are blended into one another depending on the speed. I mean, you can actually press control and move this little green X to, to preview it and see what it looks like. So this speed is actually calculated, if I close this one, in the animation blueprints event graph, and it's calculated as ground speed. So we can see that in the locomotion, walk and run, it's using ground speed. Um, the ground speed is calculated from the movement components velocity, and we'll leave it as it is because it is very useful. However, we want to change the walk and run animations depending on both direction and speed because we want the player to reverse the walking animation when they're walking backwards. We've set it up so they can't run, but if you wanted to on your end, you can. And because we need to change these animations based on two axes, not just one, see, the original one has only one speed. We need to use a 2D blend space. So we can't actually use the one that's already set up for us, which is a shame, but it's fine. So we will right click and uh, use animation at the top here and blend space, just click blend space and use SK mannequin. And we will call this BS MM walk, run, FWD, BWD. So forward and backward. And open it up. So it, it looks relatively the same as the Blend Space 1D, but note that the axis settings has both a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. We'll make the horizontal axis be called direction with a minimum axis of minus 180 and a maximum axis of 180. And then we will update the vertical axis to be speed. And we will copy what the original blend space was using. So that was using zero minimum axis value to 500 here. Now, how do we actually get animations into this graph though? Well, it's right behind my head <laughs> as usual. All of these animations can be clicked and dragged into the graph. So we want to use walk in place, walk forwards, walk backwards and run forwards. And where we want to place them is, uh, I will put walk in place 
walk in place directly into the center at zero speed. So this means they're not walking anywhere, they've got no speed, um, but they are looking directly in front of them. So zero would always be you're moving in the direction where you are looking and minus 180 or plus 180 would be that you're moving in the exact opposite direction of where the player is looking. So now that I've got my walk in place, I want to make sure that it's perfectly at speed zero and direction zero as well. I can move these values at the top of the graph here once I have my keyframe selected, so I can put direction zero. But also, once you click and drag an animation onto the graph, it does add a new blend sample. So above me on the left here, there is a blend sample. You can see it's called MM Walk in Place Zero, and um, its direction is zero, so that's great, but also its speed is not zero, so I'm gonna put that to zero. You can change its animation if you want to. It's handy, so you don't need to be finicking around with these tiny keys. I'm gonna put the rest of them in here as well, so I'm gonna put a few of these Walk in Place, and this is just, I'm no animator, so this is not, probably not perfect, <laughs> but uh, this is what's worked for me, at least. Make sure this is all on zero. I'm putting a walk in place on every, every line, at 90, at 180, at minus 180, at minus 90 all on zero and now I'm gonna add my walking forward as mm walk forward here we go at I think it's 230 230 that was um, where it was default set in the 1d blend space so I'm just gonna keep to those settings because they seem to work pretty well but you also want to put walking backwards at minus 180 and at 180 as well. So minus 180, minus 180, at the same speed, so I think it's 230 speed, 230 speed, and 180. Yeah, see, I think that's gonna switch to backwards walking a bit too early, so I'm also going to add more walk forwards on these lines. You can just cop uh, control C and control V, so copy and paste the same animation type. So minus 90 on there, 230. And 90 here, and 230, yeah. We need to add a run. So search for run. MM run forward. And we want direction zero, speed 500. And then because we don't have a running backwards, I'm gonna leave out the 180 and minus 180, but you cannot, the way that we've set it up, you cannot run backwards anyway, so that doesn't matter for us. Um, but you might want to have a run backwards if you want to allow for that, and then you make a backwards animation and pop them at minus 180 and 180. And I want this to be minus 90. So yeah, I think this should work for our tank controls. To make these blends a bit smoother, you can also search in the asset details on the left for sample smoothing. And you can change the weight speed. And I just changed mine to five and I quite liked that. Uh, but yeah, again, play with it and see what works for you. To now be able to use our new 2D blend space in our animation blueprint, we now need to figure out this direction. So let's save this blend space and go back to our animation blueprint. What we'll do is we'll calculate the direction straight after the ground speed. So after the ground speed, add a calculate direction node and not the utilities one. It's uh, the anim instance one. And then we've already got velocity because the wonderful people at Epic have already set that for us. So let's get velocity and set it into our calculate direction. 
And then we can set our base rotation based on the current rotation that we set earlier. And then right click on return value, promote it to a variable, and this can be our direction. So I'm just gonna call this direction. And of course, hook that up. Don't forget to hook that up, please. Thank you very much. Then go back into the locomotion state machine. So double click here. And um, in walk and run, we want to delete the old blend space. And we want to replace this one with the blend space we just created. So right click and search for play because we want a player for the blend space. And then MM, uh, what was it, forward and backward? Here we go, blend space player, BS, MM, walk, run, forward, backward. Yes, perfect. And then we can hook up the results. We wanna put the ground speed into our speed and then our new direction variable, where are you? There you are, into our direction. And I think if Orgar has gone well, that should be everything. So let's walk backwards, there you go. Can't run backwards either. But we can run forwards, oh yeah. And we're walking on the spot. And the turn is not incredibly slow. Yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm sure there's probably some things I could do better or whatever. But you let me know if there's any anything you found that you would change. I've lost you now, I've lost him now. I've lost them. So there you have it. Now you have a little bit more control over your tank controls. I hope this answered most, if not all, of the tank control questions that I got in my earlier video. And if you haven't checked that one out, please do. It would be a really good follow up from this one because you can put your new character into fixed camera angles. And if you want a chance to play around with the code yourself, I will upload this whole project onto Drive for Patreons to download and explore to their hearts content. So the link will be in the description below if you want to check out my Patreon and download the project for yourself. As always, please do let me know if there's anything that I missed from this tutorial or if there's anything you might have done differently because I love to learn from you as well as sharing with you. And that's what this community is all about learning together and sharing our findings. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If there's anything you'd love to see an Unreal Engine tutorial on, please pop it in the chat. And I do have some more in mind for the near future. And if you'd like to see my face more, then you can check me out on twitch.tv slash yagmanx. And we are doing a Friday afternoon indie game appreciation stream where I stream games made by you. So if you are an indie dev working in a small team or even a solo team and you'd like me to play your game live on stream then feel free to join the discord which is in the description down below and give us a link to your game I would love to check them out I also edit them down and put them onto my gaming with Yagman X second channel so here's a clip from that no <laughs> congratulations we've died a hundred Fuck off. <laughs> it's just been really lovely to see what kind of games you create and to be able to get inspired by you as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the video, especially if you made it this far. I'll see you in the next one and have a lovely day or evening. Bye. Thank you so much to my Patreons, October Night Games, Bruce Barrett, Sherman Jackson, DC Bradshaw, Salvatore Merrifield, Stuart Terry, Ib196, Quinn Darko, and Dave Smith, as well as all that aren't on here. I really appreciate you all. When the words I thought I'd never speak away and unafraid, I'll sleep or die.